Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. Today I will be doing a chest, shoulder, and tricep lever gym only workout. Stay tuned. I wake up most mornings at 5 a.m. and then by 5.30 I'm training. So from that 5 to 5.30 mark, I'll have some caffeine, I'll hang out with these two greyhounds, I'll perform the McGill Big Three, and then I'll move upstairs to my bonus room and continue with my warm up. Because this is an upper body push day, I'm gonna use the skier to warm up. If you don't have the skier, you can use a jump rope or jog or any other means of warming up. But if it was a lower body leg day, I would use the Rogue Echo. And if it was an upper body pull day, I would use the Concept 2 Rower. As of late and for many years, I've found the push-pull legs routine to be the most valuable for me because it allows me to hit each muscle group about twice a week and it allows my connective tissue ample time to recover. So for this warm-up, I'll use the Concept 2 skier for about 500 meters and that takes about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Now that my heart rate's up and I have blood in my triceps and shoulders, I'm going to move down to the garage gym to continue this workout. Now I'm back down in the garage gym to continue my warm up. It's a really nice Monday and it's not as hot and as humid as it has been. So I've got the garage door open and this is one of the major benefits of having a garage gym, just being able to open it up. I do have some wildlife out there hooting and hollering, so hopefully you won't hear too much of that. But bands are probably one of the most important parts of my warm up, especially on upper body push days. So it's really important for me to warm up my chest, shoulders and triceps. This is one of my favorite banded exercises to warm up with. And I'll do about 12 or 15 of these. A banded lateral raise also is really important for me to warm up my shoulders. About 12 or 15 of these. Even bicep curls. And then I'll connect to those hooks up there and do some tricep push downs about 12 or 15, and none of this is taxing. This is just to get some blood in the muscle, hopefully to prevent any injury. Now it's almost time to start the lever gym only push workout. Some of these parameters may change for you. So for example, you might do fewer sets, you might do more sets. Your weight necessarily won't look like mine. You'll either be stronger than me or not as strong as me. So don't feel like you have to follow this to a T, but as I've mentioned before in some of my other workouts, my training program is largely based on Dante Trudell's DC training. So I take things a lot closer to failure, but I do a lot fewer sets than most people. So we're gonna start with a flat chest press. And as I've mentioned before, I elevate the bench to do this. I'm gonna be using my own bench, but back here I do have the PowerTech flat incline decline bench, which works fine. I will use a few other pieces of, or a few other attachments along with the lever gym, including a chain, some handles, a bat bar, and some bands. So while I said this is a lever gym only workout, you will need a couple of additional pieces, but this is the only machine that I'll be using today. I think the PowerTech lever gym is one of the best bangs for your buck for home gym equipment. If you're someone who's interested in getting your overhead press, bench, squat, and deadlift numbers up, then you'll probably want to start with a rack and a high-low pulley. But if you're not worried about those numbers, or if you want a way to complement those numbers, I think the PowerTech lever gym is a really good option. Because it has the arms for pushes and pulls, and because it has the high-low pulleys, again, for pushes and pulls, I think it'll cover just about every major muscle group you want. The only exercise that I'm not real crazy about doing with the lever gym is the squat, but I do like performing the front squat with the lever gym squat bar. Now it's time to start the warm-up process for the flat press. Notice that I do have my bench elevated on plyo boxes, and I've talked about why I do this a number of different times but it's to make the flat press feel more natural. I am using my own bench. The lever gym does come with the flat incline decline bench, which is a fine option. I just use this one. Also, I have the arms working independently of one another. And I'll elevate my feet on the bench just because this is more comfortable for my lower back. So I'll start with about 15 repetitions to reduce the chance of injury to help prime the muscles for much heavier lifts. An additional 50 pounds for about eight to 10 repetitions. I'm getting ready to move up to 445s to continue the warm up process. And up until this point, I have been fasted, but now during my workout, I'm drinking a protein powder. It may change, but right now it's BSN Syntha 6. It does have a little bit of carbohydrate in it, plenty of protein to power me through this workout.
I'm getting ready to perform my first work set, 445s and 225s, and depending on your goals, your rep count may be higher than this, it may be lower than this, but let's get to it. Also, depending on how my joints feel, I may come to a complete stop between every repetition. If my joints feel good, I won't come to a complete stop. So eight repetitions is my first set. Now I may take a two minute break before I do my next set and research is showing that longer breaks are better for hypertrophy and strength gains. As I'm resting between workouts, I will mention that I do use a log book. I have a shelf full of these from training over the years. So I know what I did on this exercise the last time I performed it. I know how much I need to go up. So this is basically a history of my performance and I'll look back on these to see periods where I had excellent training, periods where I had terrible training, and this is really valuable feedback, so I highly recommend keeping a logbook. Also, this is where I deviate from DC training a little bit. In my DC training days, I would have rest pause these sets, so I would have done that first set, I would have taken about 15 breaths, did another set, taken about 15 breaths, and did another set, but now in my older years, that type of training is just too exhausting, and I like to train more frequently, so I'll rest two or three minutes, and then I'll hit my second and final set on this exercise. And you can see how close I'm pushing it to failure here. And that's good for that exercise. So I got eight on the first one, seven on the second one. If I would have rest paused that, I would have gotten eight on the first one and maybe three or four on the second one. So that's why I think the longer rest breaks are valuable because you'll just increase your numbers. Now I'll rest for a little bit and I'll move on to my second chest exercise. Next up, I'm gonna perform a high rep isolation chest exercise. Now, if all of my equipment was open to me, I would probably use the PowerTech Streamline Functional Trainer the Titan Peck Fly or the Peck Fly attachment for the flat incline decline bench. But because this is a leverage gym only workout, I'll use some bands attached to the arms. All I did was loop the band in on itself. I've attached a carabiner to the band and my big revolving handles. And then I'll perform a fly movement. This is one of my warm up sets. And now I'll make the exercise a little harder by adding an additional band to it. Set number two. And if you're gonna do this before I continue, make sure that you have weight on the weight horns on the lever gym because I don't want the thing to flip over on you. I still think that's too light. So now I need to up it a band. Now it's time for my high rep fly set. So I'm gonna shoot for about 20 repetitions and in DC this is what's called a widow maker. So I took the red band off and now I have a green and whatever color that is. And this will make all the difference in the world for making the exercise more challenging. And again, these revolving handles are invaluable. They make the exercise feel much more comfortable. about 25 repetitions and that gave me a good burn in my chest. Now I'll stretch my chest out 
and in DC this is called extreme stretching. I'll just use the setup that I have now and I'll just hold this position for about 60 seconds and as this position comes easier or gets easier I'll step out a little bit more. In DC this is typically done with dumbbells laying on a bench press. And that's all I'm doing for chest today. Two work sets on the flat press, one work set for my flies. I will hit chest again during this week, so the volume will go up a little bit. But because I have a higher intensity and I push my training closer to failure, I don't do nearly as many work sets. Also, I have found this lower volume, higher intensity to be much more joint friendly for me. At this point in the workout, for most people, I would recommend pulling in your flat incline, decline bench and doing some type of an overhead press either facing towards the lever arms or away from the lever arms. But for me, I can't do overhead presses because I have something weird going on in my upper back. So instead, I replace the overhead press with an incline press. Now, is it as good? Well, that's arguable, but I will say that the incline press does do a good job of hitting the front shoulder. Starting that warm up process, and you'll probably notice that for my incline press, I don't bring the bar down quite as close to my chest as I do for the flat press. And that's just for shoulder health for me, depending on your limitations, things might look a little bit different for you. Just continuing the warm-up process to get my brain and my body ready for my two heavy work sets. And I may end up coming to a dead stop on these, just depending on how my shoulders and elbows and wrists feel. Now it's time for work set number one. As for rep cadence, I obviously go slower on the way down and more explosively on the way up. But on the negative, I don't count how many seconds it takes me to get down. That would be too exhausting to sit there and count in my head. But instead, I just go slow enough to where, as Dante Trudell recommends, at any point during the negative, I could reverse course and go into a positive. So everything is controlled and relatively slow. Now I'll rest for a little bit and then get ready to hit my second set. And as I mentioned, I'm fasted right now with the exception of a protein shake. And I just train that way because I lift first thing in the morning before going to work and I don't have time to eat and then train in the morning. So this is the system that works for me. Of course, it would probably be more beneficial if I was able to eat a meal or two meals and then train. But by the time I finish my work day and get home, there's nothing left in the tank to do any training. So this is what works for me. I've rested a couple of minutes. Now it's time to hit working set two. So 11, 13 on the first set, 11 on the second set. I'm happy with those numbers. I beat the log book by going up in weight. My rep count dropped a little bit, but I went up in weight, so it's a win. Now next time, I'll increase the weight just by two and a halfs when I do this exercise. A two and a half on each side, there's no point in trying to jump up 10 or 20 pounds. And that's why two and a halfs are so invaluable. I used to think that two and a halfs were kind of a joke back in the day, but I did see a meme at one point that says, those who know, know, and it shows a picture of the two and a halfs, so I gotta stress how important they are. Next up, I have my isolation exercise for delts. So I'm gonna do my chain attached double arm lateral raise. If you don't have this chain set up like I do, and I've shown this before, it's a chain creased and then a revolving handle carabiner attached to each end. If you don't have this set up where you can't do both arms at the same time, just hook the chain that comes with the lever gym to one of the handles and then do single arm lateral raises but I'll do my warm up set and then I'll get ready for my work set.
Now it's time for my high rep shoulder set, also known as my Widowmaker. I'll shoot for 20 repetitions. I have gone up in weight since the last time by two and a half pounds on each side of the weight horn. So hopefully I'll be able to hit my 20 or hopefully I'll get close. Here we go. So I guess I'm kind of glad that I didn't hit my goal so I can talk about this. So on this exercise, five pounds is a lot to go up, a two and a half on each side. So instead of hitting 20, I got 12. So I'll keep this exercise in the rotation one more time or two at the most. And if I continue to fail on this exercise and not hit what I did in the logbook the previous time, then I'm gonna swap this exercise out for a different shoulder exercise. Next up is an extreme stretch for shoulders. If you want to know more about extreme stretching, Dr. Scott Stevenson of Fortitude Training talks about it all the time. Dante Trudell talks about it all the time. There's a little bit of research to back it up, but enough research and enough people saying that it's worked for them for me to also use it in my training. So I'll hold this extreme stretch for about 60 seconds. If that stretch is hard on your shoulders, there's of course plenty of ways to stretch your shoulders out. Normally I would use the TRX, but because I'm trying to stick to the leverage gym as much as possible, I'll just use the arms on the leverage gym for stretching. Next up, I have my major tricep exercise. Now there is some carryover, so of course the dip that I'm going to do on the lever arms will hit the chest some and will hit the shoulder some so that it's nice that it will hit multiple muscle groups at one time. I perform this exercise to a dead stop and that's just my preference. I found that it's easier on my shoulders and other connective tissue. Next up, adding some weight to the dip. And from time to time, people do ask me if the lever gyms can handle weighted dips. Well, the arms are rated for 500 pounds so keep that in mind, depending on how much weight you're doing and how much you weigh. So 25 felt good. I'm going to jump up to 45. All right, this will likely be my work set. All right, I'll rest a few minutes and then hit set number two. I have the spudding belt squat belt and I have the rogue rhino multi belt and I could use either of those for this exercise. But right now I'm just using a fitness gear dip belt that came from Dick Sporting Goods and it works perfectly. Set number two, here we go. Whew, lightweight baby. All right, 11 and nine. I'm getting ready to move on to the last exercise in today's workout, which will be the overhead tricep extension. I'll try to do about 20 repetitions. I really like this exercise because it provides a nice stretch, which I think is very beneficial for muscle growth. I've also finished my intro workout protein drink, and now I've switched over to just water with some caffeine in it. Now it's time for my work set. I only have 70 pounds on there, but again, I'm doing high reps. And these roller pads really provide a nice place for me to press against and kind of add stability to this movement. This is one of those exercises where you can wake up sore the next morning because of the stretch that it provides. I 
I don't know if the microphone is picking it up, but man, my elbows are cracking and carrying on. I think this was too light because I'm at 20 now, or well, almost 20, and it doesn't feel taxing enough. So I'll increase the weight and get ready for my real work set. So here's an extra 10 pounds for my work set. And on an exercise like this, 10 pounds is pretty significant. So I have my bat bar, which I've talked about before, the chain that comes with the lever gym in order to get this movement to a full range of motion. Without this chain, that arm would end up hitting the frame of the machine. There's 12, and this still feels maybe just a tad bit light. <sighs> but overall, that was a really good burn in the tricep, so therefore, I think it was a really quality movement. So believe it or not, that concludes the workout. I'll stretch a little bit, maybe mess with the bands a little bit, but that's it. I hope this workout was valuable for a couple of different reasons. One, and I think the most important, is just to see the lever gym in action. I'm not delusional enough to think that anybody came here to see me perform 800-pound squats or 800-pound deadlifts. That's just not the way that I train. But I think for anyone who wants to buy the lever gym or who has it and may not know what to do with it, hopefully something like this is very helpful. Um, I'm getting ready to eat and... If anybody wants to see the way that I prepare my meal after a workout, I'll be glad to show that if you all want to see it. Also, hopefully throughout this video, I've provided little nuggets of information for anybody who's new to strength training and may not know some of the parameters that you follow, or for anyone who's been doing it for a while, hopefully some of the information that I provided will just simply reinforce what you already know. But if you found anything in this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so. You can find me on Instagram under Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.